I can talk. Yeah, if you want to just start doing it. Yeah. So, uh, did you see this ray tracing demo at least on the internet, any movie or something like this? You uh, didn't see it yet. No, no. Okay, okay. okay. So, uh, you know that uh, our GF100 is pretty capable for the ray tracing. It's almost three times faster than GT200. We have some nice ray tracing stuff here. This one, this demo, will be available uh, for the launch of the GF100. You can, I mean, you can download it. All the users will uh, have it on uh, the DVDs from the, our ARC partners. I mean, every card will have all the demos uh, in the box. And here we have a couple of scenes, which are uh, which are prepared from our artists. Uh, you can choose whatever car you want. Like, for example, let's, let's go for Bugatti. So what this, so what this is doing now, obviously, you're loading in the whole scene and the car itself. This is all ray traced, so there's no rasterization, there's no modeling going on. Um, so once you go clicks on the main scene, so what, so what you'll see, each of the little blue dots are individual light rays running into the car, uh -huh. and that's what's creating the image. So as the rays are bouncing back, that's what you're, you're then seeing is the final image. So as you can see, the quality gets, gets very good very, very quickly. If you were to run this on a CPU or a low end or like a lower end proof generation GPU, you, you wouldn't be able to do this in this in this short period of time. Well, you can you can run this on uh, every GPU from GT 100 up, but it will be slower, and you need to have at least 890 megabyte frame buffer, which means one megabyte frame buffer you need to have. Otherwise, uh, you can't run because you don't have enough memory. And uh, then we are running now on almost full HD resolution. Of course, it's it's uh, a little bit slower, but it's still it's rendering much faster than normally you can imagine. But we can go down for let's say a little bit smaller resolution, and uh, then so you what? see that the rendering it's uh, much faster. So what's important about this, obviously, if you imagine using this tool in game as a hybrid ray tracing device. You could have a much lower resolution for certain objects that can very quickly be very tracked. So, so if it is really clear. For example, on this on this demo, uh, you so have here you have a full city scene that's been completely rendered. This this uh, small oh, even icon on the floor. showing it's uh, this small icon showing that it's uh, now a rendering. Okay, so it's. You see, of course, it's still, it's still. Uh, uh, Just leave it for a second. Yeah. So as you can see, so in theory, this, this will never stop rendering or, or bouncing uh -huh. rays of light. So the image quality gets better and better and better the longer you leave it. Um, obviously, it gets to a point where it's very hard to tell the difference because you're just bouncing off minute little particles. But as you can see, just in this short time, it's already rendered pretty much fully. It, it won't take very long at all for the image to, to look like a photo. And what we can do is we can show you, I think next door they probably had one rendering on the, in the demo area for a while, so it should look pretty they good. Have is there anything? Um, the demo looks relatively basic. The amount of physics calculations going on are, are massive. Can you add a wire? We'll show you the wireframe model in another demonstration. This is, I mean, in, in compared to the GT200, it's almost three times faster in fluid simulation in compared to the previous generation. Just as far as Were you applying physics to the water before? So what? In, in any other game in, before? In games. So physics. I have never seen. Yeah, physics to the water is quite a new thing. So um, do you know Just Cause Two? It's Which one? Just Cause Two by Square yes, Enix. Yes. Yes. That actually has on the PC version has um, has CUDA enabled water. So if you have a GeForce card, then the water effects on there are actually accelerated by by CUDA. Mm. So you're seeing um, quite impressive effects, as you can see here. It's it's much much smoother than what we've thought had in the past. Normally, you can run now easily like hundreds of thousands of particles, and it uh, works really smooth. I mean, if you remember the physics demo in GT200, there was like 80,000 particles, and it was quite tough yes. for the car. Now we can easily run like 200, 300,000, and it's fine. Make tessellation right down. So, if 
you look at this, this tessellation is very, very low right now. So as you, you can see, see uh -huh. yes. it's a very basic wireframe model. There's a, quite a lot of triangles, and compared to current generation games, for example, it still looks pretty good. So if you go back to the So now if you can see, if you look how much smaller all the parts are, so go down a bit and mm. go back to the water. Indeed. So you can see just how many just how many more triangles there are there, just by changing the tessellation level. So if you turn off the wireframe, excuse the camera, back up, back up the water. Okay, okay. So now, so now if we take the tessellation now and increase the tessellation factor. So as you can see, the water gets far more, far, far more detailed and looks more realistic. In compare, you just change it. It's, it's a are. normal water like you remember from yes. games like years ago. And now, when you go for really high tessellated, it's I guess that the difference is really visible. It's and looks really great. So obviously, okay. obviously, going up to the very top level, it's probably not really worth a game developer going up this high because you're not seeing a massive advantage. But compared to say, to say there, that's probably I'd say a bit less than that. That's probably about where we are today. So, so what you see there is we're obviously applying wind to the hair, but it's moving in a very realistic way. Again, it's all physics based. Um, See, just take it around. It moves very. It moves very realistically. And uh, um, um, is every piece of hair independent? Independent. Yeah. So if you look, if you look here, for example, what we can actually do, if we turn off this full dynamic range. So we just turn off the animation, just to stop. So what we can do. So as you look in here, we can actually increase and decrease the, the, the width of each individual strand of hair. Uh -huh. So you can see dynamically how much thicker her hair gets if we do that. Um, we can also increase the amount of hair. <laughs> right down to absolutely nothing on there. Um, we can give her curly hair, for example. We can give her more hair or less hair. So there you can see that's obviously just a few strands of hair and then we can add more and more strands every single time until she has a, a full head of hair. Then we can grab and do a good shape there. We can also do like add shadows to the whole hair. We can render individual strands. That's using that's oh. using a lot a lot of compute power compared to what we had at certain points. Oh, just so you can see some effects. Mm. So, as you can see, you've got a full um, full wireframe model. What eagles on there? Just pause the model. If you press it, you want to put it on the tessellation so we can see. Put put on the wireframe. It's F two for wireframe. Yeah. So as you can see, this is what we, I was saying about earlier in the presentation that places like as you get very close to the scene. Uh -huh. You see the tessellation is it's really really detailed. You really have a lot of triangles. If you go zooms out, just uh, one thing uh, to show you to disable the tessellation, so that you see the difference. Uh, now you would disable it, and you see. Yes. Then so obviously, you, for you go back to the X10 kind of level for the graphics. Wireframe, yeah, it looks totally yeah. different. Yeah. Basically, you have to do all the detail that at this point via the texturing as opposed to the actual polygons itself. So now, if you re enable tessellation, you can see how many more polygons it adds to the scene. So clearly, it requires a lot more compute power to do that. And then, if you zoom out, mm -hmm. so as you can see, the further away from the scene we get, because you're far, far away, dynamically. Stop running the triangles, which is why you saw in the areas where we have a very similar score to ATI. That's because what's happening is we're actually getting um, far less polygons to draw, and that's what's good about the tessellation. If you imagine a game developer having a, a properly dynamically tessellated game, it means that in theory it's down to the power of your GPU exactly what kind of experience you get all the time. 
so you can have a massively detailed game 